Hello and welcome to City Corner. I'm your host today, Todd Blackstock. On today's show, we have trailblazing riverboat captain Kevin Easton studio. And Don Morgan from Ben Park is going to tell us about an upcoming art exhibit. So you're going to stay with us for this and much more coming up next on City Corner. Our first guest today made history in 1992 as the first African-American Missourian to get a license to navigate a vessel. Senior Captain Kevin East, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So the first black cruise operator in the state of Missouri, that must be quite an achievement. And I know uh, you've been honored for that. Yes, it is quite an achievement. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, I uh, studied pretty hard to get the license. Um, and uh, it was one of those things where I started working on boats as a uh, as a deckhand, and I worked my way up to being a captain. Uh, I didn't realize I was going to be the first African American captain in the state of Missouri to get the license, but I'll take it. You know, it was something you know, a nice uh, target to hit. You know. Oh my gosh, what a feather in your cap! I mean, coming from Kirkwood High School, what uh, what kind of brought you to to the the water, the river, the boats? What made you interested in it? Well, when I was younger, my mother would take me down to the riverfront and we'd see the boats go by. Mm. And then when I turned eight years old, she actually took me on my first cruise on the Admiral. And I thought, man, this is the coolest thing to see, you know. I used to love taking those Admiral yeah. cruises because they would go like down to St. Genevieve and then they would come all the way back. It'd be like a, a whole afternoon affair. Uh, but right now you're doing the, uh, I guess the Becky Thatcher is one of the boats that you're uh, you're in charge of? Yes, Becky Thatcher and Tom Sawyer. Tom, you, you got them both, huh? Yes. Well, I rotate between the two. You rotate between the two. Uh -huh. uh, can you tell us a, a little bit about uh, what different variety of cruises you guys offer? And, uh, you know, because it looks like you've got something for everyone. Yes, we have some for everybody and some, you know. Oh, we we do a, a, skylight, a skylight dinner cruises, and then we do daily riverfront cruises, okay? Also, uh, we'll do specialty cruises such as uh, blues cruises, Oktoberfest, lock and dam cruises, uh, and also private event charters. Looks like you got decked out divas too. And, uh, oh. and tell us about the Sunday brunch cruise. I know that's got to be a, a lot of fun, especially with the weather getting nice right now. People can come out on a Sunday brunch and uh, have a great time. Yeah, Sunday brunches are really good, especially like right now, because like the weather's perfect for Sunday brunches. Uh, it's, it's a two and two hour cruise or so. And like I said, they give you a variety of foods to eat. There's a, a live band on there. Nice. And then uh, like I said, after you finish eating, you just kind of stroll the decks. What about Groove and Spin? What's that all about? Groove and Spin is like one of our local DJs comes down from one of the radio stations, and they do like a it's like a uh, almost a house party on the boat. So. You know, I'm thinking back. You started in 1992, and, and you seem like a young guy here. You know, I mean, it's like you know you're just still in the middle of your career. But one year after 1992 was the Great Flood in '93. Um, do you recall that? I mean, what was some of the, the things and challenges you had to do with that in regards to the, because I remember um, down the river, there was like a McDonald's came off the mooring and it like crashed into the, one of the bridges and stuff. Right. It was the Burger King boat that went. The Burger King boat. Right. And that had the inaugural, the uh, minesweeper attached to it. And that broke loose first and then it took off down the river. That sank. Uh, the Burger King boat went down and it sort of hit the Poplar Street Bridge and knocked off the first top two decks. Gosh. Yeah. I mean, so you were down there. When all, well, did you guys have to, like, stop your uh, stop the cruises for, for how long? Well, the cruises stopped for almost six months. Six months. Yeah, huh? so that was like a, a kind of a scary thing right there. Not cruising for six months. It's <laughs> scary. So when you're doing the different cruises, are they all pretty much made, based downtown? You kind of just do a scene of the city there? Uh, mm -hmm. Or do you kind of get out and about, you know, up towards Alton or... You know, yes, you know? uh, certain cruises we get out from the city of St. Louis, uh, Lock and Down cruises, we do, do those in September and October. And we actually go through Lock and Down 27. We go up to uh, the confluence of Missouri yeah. and Mississippi Rivers. And then there are some cruises that we used to do. I think we still do the uh, Kimswick cruises. Okay. We'll go down to Kimswick, come back to St. Louis. That's not a nice little jog, Kimswick. It's not quite as far as going to St. Genevieve, but it's like down and back. Right. Um, that's pretty amazing. Uh, so what challenges do you face when you're navigating? I know you've, you've, 
you do this all the time, but is inclement weather, I, I suppose that would be the biggest challenge. Yeah, inclement weather is one thing. You got the high water sometimes, and then with high water, you got a lot of debris flowing down the river, so you kind of dodge debris most of the time too. Uh, traffic is another thing, because St. Louis Harbor is a real busy industrial harbor, so you're trying to dodge towboats and barges, and pretty much that's uh, your challenge right wow. now. You know, I, my parents had a boat when we were growing up, and the flood of 93 really messed up some of our docks up in Alton, but mm -hmm. we always, and I still like to get up there to the confluence. I think mm -hmm. it's one of the most beautiful areas in our region. I mean, you've got three rivers flowing together right there. Mm -hmm. You got sandbars there, and you know, people are out enjoying themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how do you feel about that area up there? Oh, it's a nice area up there. It's pretty nice. It's all the wildlife up there, too. So you get to see, uh, like I said, going to the Lock and Dam, you come out at the head of the canal, and there's a little island, I guess it's Mosentine Island, mm. and you will see like maybe the wild turkeys, the deer. Uh, as it gets cooler, you'll see the eagles come by too. Oh, so wow. especially during the Lock and Dam cruise, you'll probably see some eagles and stuff like that. So during the cruises, I guess there's inside areas and outside, so if it rains, people can go inside. And, yes. And if it's nice outside, you can just stay out there and, and bask in the beauty of oh. our, uh, our region. Oh, yes, yes. Are you also the cruise narrator? Yes. Yeah, I mean, like, what are some of the things you say to the, you know, to the folks on board, like when they get on board, will you give us a little? Well, I'll tell them that the Thompson and Becky Thatcher are 19th century replica uh, paddle wheel boats, and they take people back in time to when steamboats ruled the Mississippi River and fueled the western expansion of the city. You know, does it bring it back to some of those old books we read growing up, you know, of, of you know, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn going up and down the river, because you're in the Becky Thatcher and the Tom Sawyer. Is it any recreation of, of like dress, you know, people dressed like that era or anything? Well, no, we don't have anybody dressed like that, but every once in a while you're out there cruising and there's somebody actually floating down on homemade rafts, just like Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn would do. So do you have a boat on your own? Or you just drive the big boat? I just drive the big boat. You just, you just yeah. drive the big dog? I right. might have a remote control boat, you know. <laughs> now, I understand there's a lot of stuff going on. There's even packages where if you, uh, you can get a, a riverboat package and a discount if the people also do a tour with the Arch. Yes, those are available too. Those are also available? Right. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So what else, uh, what else is, is going on with the riverboat cruises? I think uh, it seems like there's, there's hiring, there's some need for people right now. Uh, you know, what kind of people would you be looking for to hire? Right, we are hiring for uh, all positions down on the boats now. We're hiring for deckhands, senior deckhands, cruise coordinators, wait staff, galley staff, ticket sales agents. All those people we're looking for. Perfect. So uh, you're doing the media tour right now. Are you having fun going around town and oh, you know checking out the different spots? Oh, it's a blast. You know? <laughs> it's a blast, I like it. So what do you like to do in around St. Louis? Are you a big Cardinal fan? I'm a Cardinal fan. Uh, I'm also a football fan, so. Yeah, you got a chance Rams, to see yeah. uh, those XFL games? Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. I guess you're too busy doing the riverboat cruises, right? Right, yeah. All right, so anything but, uh, else you'd like to, to mention about the, the Gateway Riverboat Cruises or, you know, the things that it offers? Oh, you got that, uh, that cool restaurant on site. Can you tell us about that? We have the uh, cafe. Uh, the paddle boat? The paddle wheel, uh, paddle wheel cafe, and that's open from... Uh, Thursday to Sunday. Okay. Uh, from 11 a.m. or 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, we uh, come on down and have a sandwich. What kind of food do they got? Oh, sandwiches, uh, salads, wraps, everything. All right. Mm -hmm. You know, I do want to mention that uh, congratulations on uh, you know the history you've made, and it's pretty cool because you actually have some things in the Missouri Historical Society right now. Would you like to share that before we let you go? Yes, I uh, have my jacket and my hat in the History Museum and it's, I'm proud to have it there. Um, like I said, it's just, it shows my story, it tells my story and it's gonna live on forever, I guess. Well, what is your story? I mean, you know, I guess uh, just coming mm -hmm. out, being a deckhand and then making your way through. What are some of the most rewarding things that you've experienced, you know, on a cruise? I mean, anything that's something unusual or that was really neat? Well, what's neat is when I, like I said, I would talk to some people on a cruise and then maybe the next year they show up again and they say, hey, we enjoyed your cruise, you know, just as we did last time. You know, it's nice because, you know, they remember who I was. Yeah. And then sometimes I remember who they were, you know, because we probably sit there and talk a lot. 
And I do like that. I enjoy people coming up to the pilot house and talking to me. So when you're, you're cruising around, do you have that opportunity to, to, to mingle with people? Because I know you got to keep them safe. And you, well, yeah, you don't want to drive into the arch or anything. Yeah, I'm sitting there. Uh, like I said, the door will probably be open, and they just kind of walk by and say something to me, and we just kind of sit there and just talk. Did so anything crazy happen? Anybody, like, get sick or you have to call 911? Or, you know, or has it been pretty cool? It's, it's pretty smooth sailing. Pretty I can smooth say. sailing? Right. Okay. No pun intended, but it's pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, so you got a down pet, huh? <laughs> right. Well, congratulations. It must be an honor to, uh, you know, have your memorabilia in the Missouri uh, Historical Society. How did they come up? Did they call you up and tell you that? Or was there a ceremony or anything? Well, uh, actually, one of my mother's friends, she actually called somebody from the History Museum and told them about it. Then they came down. They talked to me about uh, what I did and everything. So... They came down, did an interview with me, and then they wanted to see if I had anything to donate. And I said, I got a jacket and a hat that you can probably use. And so they took that from me. And then, uh, like I said, that was like 13 years ago. Oh, wow. And then uh, just luckily, it just came back up again. I was like, I'm living this all over again. Yeah, it's so like it's, a, yeah, a it's, reincarnation right. of it again. So I'm just enjoying it, you know. Well, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Is there any, uh, the, can you gear us, uh, send us off to the website for ticket information? The, I guess we got the uh, we got the graphic. Yeah, you can see our, uh, the uh, Gateway Arch. We're, uh, we're both at the Gateway Arch. Uh, Gatewayarch.com experience riverboats. Yeah. So fast cruises. Yeah. There you have it. Okay. Well, Senior Captain East, thank you so much for joining us here today thank on you. City Corner. You're a young man, so I would assume you'll be doing this for much longer. Right. <laughs> All right, folks, stick around. Dan Morgan from Benton Park will be here to tell us about this great art exhibition coming soon. So stay with us. piece on the Tiffany Neighbors on STL TV? No. Let me show you. My wife and I were looking for homes. We lived in the city all of her life and there's just a, a different energy when you're in in the city. Keep up with what's happening in your neighborhood. Watch STL TV. Be in the know. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! You saved me. <sighs> Dad? Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. <laughs> this is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. 
boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the way I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Hey, welcome back to City Corner. Our second guest today is a local artist whose work will be exhibited at a new exhibit coming up in Benton Park. At this time, we'd like to welcome Don Morgan to City Corner. Don, thank you so much. Uh, your new work exhibit is called Art, Seen, and Found, and we're very excited about that coming to Benton Park, a truly historic area in St. Louis. Indeed. Yeah, we are so happy to show our work in Benton Park. We found Benton Park We've all uh, been immigrants from other places in the country. Uh, the four artists came from uh, many different cities and we uh, love Benton Park. So we started to look around Benton Park and saw subject matter for our art. So art seen and found is kind of a, a kind of neat way that you all came together and have this exhibit. Yeah, some of the artists see it and paint it. Others find things and make stuff out of what they find. Nice. Well, you're a veteran photographer, and I understand you spent 25 years at a very prominent university in clinical psychology. It's true. I had a long career as a clinical psychologist, and I'm happy to have left uh, after 25 years to come to St. Louis to get married to a wonderful woman, my wife, Phyllis. So we built a house in Benton Park, and um, we've been finding the wonders of St. Louis. So you were at Rutgers for many years. I wanted to throw that in there. And it seems like a lot of the uh, you know, things you like to do are into the abstract. And is there, a, like, I wanted to ask you this because since you were a clinical psychologist for so many years, is there like a mental relationship between psychology and abstract paintings and photography? Well, I can tell you the, the relationship that came to me is that for a lot of years, I taught the Rorschach test. You remember the ink blots? Okay. <clears throat> There's a standard set of ink blots, <clears throat> and people are asked to look at them and tell you what they um, see. So, uh, just for example, I have a series called the Rorschach series where I do things that are a little bit hard to figure out what they are. And people look at them and say, I see a woman holding. <clears throat> something and bent over and this happens to be um, ice in the marina outside where I used to live in Jersey City, New Jersey. Yes, yeah, Nick, because you see like it looks like a woman with like a, uh -huh. a sunflower head. <laughs> exactly. You know, that's what I see. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, the, re uh, the funny part is just um, that I wound up being interested in uh, abstract figures on the street that you can find. This is from when they fix cracks on the street with tar. And they make real interesting designs. Those tar fixing guys are like great artists. They can make things look <clears throat> pretty cool. Looks like a peace sign and looks like a Zeppelin. <laughs> looks like the Hindenburg. Right. You know, it's like hovering over the sky right there. Yeah, see, exactly. So it works just like in the Rorschach test. You're telling me all the cool things that it looks like to you. Now, is this a part of the photos called the Pantographs? Painting Graphs is a new series that I've been working on, and um, one of them is back there. And I can tell you about them. Here's a, here's a, a proof of three different ones. <clears throat> so these are big. They're about four feet by three feet, and they look like abstract art. When people come and see them, they say, you're a painter. And I'm like, no, I'm a photographer, but I like to steal these things from walls. These are from walls in Guatemala. Um, and this is, a, this is a, a telephone pole that somebody painted against a wall. And I just think they look beautiful. So I steal them and make them into pictures, and I've called them 
painting graphs. Well, so I guess you can just use them and people can kind of, one thing about art, when you're looking at that, it kind of soothes your soul. You know, when you get there, it's like watching a fish tank. You know, it's something where, uh -huh. you know, you can really uh, go deep into your mind. I, that's what I like from them. For example, the one back there, if, uh, if they can get a shot of that between us, um, it looks like a painting um, by a famous uh, abstract painter, but it's actually a concrete floor in a bathroom in Austin, Texas. So uh, you never know what you're going to see. But when you look at it, just like you say, Todd, you can kind of get lost in it and feel whatever feelings come up. So you've got this huge event Sunday, April 23rd. Mm -hmm. Can you give us the, uh, a little bit of the information about that day? Because it, it looks like it's going to be held at a really neat place. It is. So, again, Benton Park is full of these cool places. Um, <clears throat> my friend Tim Tucker used to live in this place. It was called the Buggy Shop, and it's a beautiful space that um, Adnan Sabek bought, <clears throat> and he uses it as an event space. It's called Atelier 1879, which is when it was <clears throat> when it was built, and um, it's a beautiful event space. So the four of us will have our work hanging, and people can walk in. It's got these big doors that open to the street, so it should be beautiful to just come in and check out all of our artwork. So it's an all-day event starting at 11 a.m., and I understand there's kind of a cool little uh, reception later in the day. We we all love food and wine, so <laughs> we're going to have a. a from uh, six to seven, there'll be a poetry experience. Someone has written poems to the works. I wanna talk about one of my other artist collaborators here, um, Lisa Collins. Lisa is another uh, person who's traveled all over the world, came here from New Zealand, and she, that's her book over there, uh, she does pictures of old buildings around St. Louis, among many things she does. But this is a new series called Love Me, Don't Leave Me. And Lisa, this is a, a pen and ink with watercolor, and it's just phenomenal. She's so good as a painter, and <clears throat> she's been finding buildings in, this is from North, uh, South Broadway, uh, down by Carondelet. Okay. Building that's been let go over many years. <clears throat> and we'd like to um, get the attention of some of the preservationist people around St. Louis who love these old buildings and want to see them preserved. It's kind of spooky. You got the, you know, like at the top, <laughs> there's a little bit of the roof. Yeah. But then you come down and it looks like a haunted house at the bottom right with the, uh, mm -hmm. with the figures of the young girls. Well, that's there. right. I, I'm glad you saw those, Todd, because Lisa puts in figures like in the windows and there's a cat and there's smoke coming out of here. She like re-inhabits the picture as though it were alive again with the ghosts of the past. It's a, it's a little spooky, but it's very sweet and beautiful to give the houses life again. So you got uh, three, I mean, that's Lisa. You also have Scott Bean, <clears throat> Phyllis Terry Friedman, and yourself. So would you like to talk a little bit about Scott and Phyllis? We got about four or five minutes left. Okay, good. Yes, so Phyllis, uh, my wife, happens to be a um, assemblage artist. And she likes to put together found objects out of wood, metal, uh, feathers. You know, Lord only knows whatever things she comes up with. This is um, copper leaf. This is a, a rare mineral of some kind that I don't remember the name of, but it's on our website. And um, beautiful woods, exotic woods that we find at St. Louis wood dealers. So Phyllis puts these together. And where do we find most of these things? at the Lemp Brewery at Regan's Junk Yard. Um, Regan Young has a, uh, an old recovered um, architectural elements yard at the Lemp Brewery. And this is like a big old washer that Phyllis found. And um, sometimes the wood comes from there. So she'll find things everywhere and put them together and make beautiful pieces out of them. You know what they say, one person's trash is another's treasure. Exactly, exactly. I mean, even look at City Museum, they've got stuff like that. You know, different like hubcaps and old bicycles mm -hmm. and just all kinds of things. What is it with the, uh, the trend of using, I, not garbage, but, but trash and things that aren't used anymore uh, into these new, uh, you know, uh, exhibits? Yeah, it is a, a, um, a thing from St. Louis, going back to Bob Cassily, whom, whose work I got to know and some of the wonderful people um, that were his associates where they would 
make things and build things out of old St. Louis artifacts. So whether it's the bricks or the um, metal objects or the elements from buildings, putting them together big and little um, is just so cool. Now let's mention Scott Bean. He's the, uh, the last one. Right, so Scott is a um, lifelong artist, um, taught art in Minneapolis for many years, and uh, he's a painter. So his works are, um, are uh, he sets up around Benton Park and has painted you know, the Irish Tavern, Cafe Venice, um, a lot of beautiful places that, that you're seeing now on the, on the roll. Um, I, I love the way he paints. He has a sort of flat style that um, the colors are just beautiful and his um, ability to render the twilight, the piece you're seeing now is Benton Park in that hour just when the sun has set and some of the lights come on. Um, it's that crack between the worlds. He paints so beautifully. Well, St. Louis is a beautiful city. When you go back historically and look at the the bones and the architect of our of our homes from back the back of the day, I love the way it's being preserved. Um, you're also president of the Benton Park Neighborhood Association and vice chair of the City Conflict Resolution. What conflicts do you uh, resolve? Well, the the um, thank goodness I finished being president of Benton Park Neighborhood Association after four years. And that's um, a wonderful thing that I met so many great people through. Um, and I am on the board of the um, Conflict Resolution Center of the city of St. Louis. And that is a wonderful organization that um, is available to do mediation between neighbors, between city employees and the administration, and between the police and citizens when it is needed. Um, and you can find out more about that on their website. Well, you seem to have that calming demeanor about yourself that you could uh, resolve conflicts. And you know, and being an artist like that, uh, you know, I'm sure it's fun to you know to mediate and, and bring people together because that's what we're going to be doing at Art Seen and Found Sunday, April 23rd from 11 to 7, and the Wine and Cheese reception from 6 to 7. And do you have to have a reservation? Nope, just wander in and hang out. Um, there'll be other events going on during the day that might be fun too. Okay, in 30 seconds, uh, anything else you'd like to mention? We love Benton Park. We love the city. We are all committed to trying to help things here now that we are residents. And um, we, we look forward to seeing people at this. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us on City Corner. And we'll see you out there on April 23rd, 11 to 7. And from 6 to 7 will be the wine and cheese reception. Well, thank you, Don Morgan, for joining us here on City Corner. We'd like to thank Kevin East, you know, the first African-American vessel captain in the state of Missouri. And we'd like to thank you for watching City Corner on STL TV. Experience St. Louis.